Aloha and welcome to Mauna Lua, Past, Present and Future. Uh, I, my name is Kaleo Pike and I am with the Livable Hawaii Kai Hui Cultural Committee and with me tonight is Marty LaPrade. With our, uh, actually she's with our Resource Committee doing very well in the Livable Hawaii Kai Hui. And we have lots of pictures tonight, so please come and join us in a menagerie, shall we say, of photos of our beloved wetlands and our Javier complex and all the people and projects that we are proud to present to you this evening. First of all, Marty, yes. take us through some of the very beginning pictures that we have tonight of the wet days Yes. here at the wetlands at Keawawa and Havea. Can you kind of explain and go through as the pictures come up yes, what I we're know. looking at? Sure, I'd be happy to. Well, the uh, Keawawa wetland is located on two properties. This is a shot of um, the wetland on the Oahu Club side. And you can see some invasive shrubs uh, just inside the white picket fence. It's actually a habitat for the endangered Alai Ula, who nest in the reeds at the far end there. Next picture. And this is a view from the livable Hawaii Kaihui property, which is about five acres on the opposite end of the wetland. And uh, it's, this is looking toward Hahayoni Valley right now. And about oh, a month or two ago, I was walking the site with uh, the Hui president, Elizabeth Riley. And it was just a wet day, too wet to do the yard work, but we found some interesting things. Next picture. So this is a view that the water came up and showed us rare, where the uh, actual boundaries of the wetland were, and interesting that it lined up with the survey we'd had done before, but it was easy to see with the water there. This is looking toward the hill where Havea Hale Complex is located in the ancient grove coconut trees. Next. Uh, this is a video of our uh, endangered bird, the Alai Ula, or Hawaiian moorhen. And this one has bands, and we'll speak about those a little later. But exciting news, these birds have come over to the Havea side, and this has not been known for quite some time. Uh, as long as I've been watching them, they've always been on the the Oahu Club side, and now that we're doing restoration work, we have a pair that's come over to the Havea side. Okay, next video. This is the construction fence between our property and uh, the next door condominium going up, and you're, it's looking up towards the Havea site. And we have a temporary uh, large puddles there. We've done some clearing, and those are Kiavi stumps. And what's interesting is we are right in an ur urban neighborhood, and yet we are a wildlife site. Here we have the condominium, and just the beautiful scenery here of the ancient coconut grove looking toward Cocoa Head. Okay. Again, our endangered bird, Alai Ula. You know, there's only about three to 500. It's hard to estimate, but that's the last estimate I've heard in the world, and they live only on Oahu and Kauai. Next, there's another picture of the flooding that we had, but it revealed some interesting things. Go ahead. And here we have the uh, wetland running over into the pipe that connects us with uh, Kuapa Pond. Another view looking toward the hill and the grove. Okay. And we're always clearing and making new places for the, so we can implement our conservation plan. And, okay, go ahead. That's just showing where the water came up. And this was the interesting photo because uh, some coral was revealed in all the rain. And sometimes we find ancient shells. What do you think those are about? Well, you know, the coral always signifies a sacred place. So that's, for it to be a sacred place, it's essential to find coral, mm -hmm. is what we call coral in our language. So to find them in such uh, multitude is, 
is a wonderful thing for us to have. Now, Marty, we're talking about restoration efforts. Mm -hmm. Now, restoration efforts, such a huge community task, but we do have someone in our hui who has stepped up, and I believe Lisa Hinano Ray is that person that we're going to speak about yes. today. And I'd just like to ask you, can you tell us a little bit about her restoration work that she's doing right now for the hui? Lisa's really helping us out. She's very busy implementing our conservation plan, uh, working with volunteers and guiding them in the removal of invasive plants, and uh, then making the way for planting the native plants that mm -hmm. are called for, and she's also helping to propagate some of those plants at the nursery. Could you name some of the plants that she's been propagating and, and also planting within the yeah. restoration area? Well, let's see. In this um, next photo, she's putting in about 21 naupaka along the fence line. Uh -huh. And she also added some uh, nanea and uki uki mm -hmm. and a milo seedling and some pohu po Pohuiui <laughs> seeds. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's got about 50 plants in this she calls Zone B. And she's been working with um, some students from the Windward Community College Student Learning Service, Service Learning Program. Yes. And uh, they most recently helped her put in Zone B. Well, we do know that restoration work takes an enormous amount of time, energy, lots of hands and most of our efforts have been through volunteerism that's right which has just been incredible for and I and I really hope that Havea becomes that beacon for other communities where we have been able to not only do restoration work but we're able to do planting removal of invasives and also to regain some of the ecosystem that was there once before. Now we also have as part of the Hui a very wonderful resource and that is where we get most of our plants. Mm -hmm. Now could you tell our listeners out there about our wonderful opportunities and also our plants that we're yes. getting from the nursery? We have a, a, a nursery in the back of uh, Kamilawiki Valley and it is uh, called, sorry, is that Camilla, Camilla yeah, Nui Valley? Camilla Nui the Valley. The next valley, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. And uh, it's Aloha Aina Nursery, Aloha Aina o Camilla Nui. And there they've been, um, well, for a number of years, restoring a nursery that was run down, but uh, bringing it up with a new name and new focus and has many interesting projects going on there. But one thing they're doing for the wetland and for Havea is they're growing the native plants called for in the conservation plan. So we have a whole host of volunteer there, volunteers there and there's always opportunities for new people to come and share their knowledge and their talents or learn new things. And that's what I find most interesting about being a member of the Hui is I certainly don't know everything, but I'm learning from uh, my friends at the Hui and from new members that join all the time. Now also at the nursery, yes. they have opportunities for classes oh. and also for uh, community groups such as um, schools to yes. come in and plant areas and I believe there was one time a pumpkin planting or, or different types of things. So the nursery doesn't only supply our cultural sites with, with foliage, but it also creates a community center for them to come and learn and different also projects to like Mamaki tea. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So we exactly. hope that the community at large out there in Mauna Lua will take advantage of these opportunities in at the nursery. Monthly plant sale. Right? Oh yes, and please, uh, can you elaborate about the monthly plant sale as well as there's also a Christmas sale, correct? Oh yeah, those are coming up, so I would check the Livable Hawaii Kaihui website for the mm -hmm. up-to-date information there. Mm -hmm. It's uh, hawaiikaihui.org. Okay. And uh, 
Beautiful. And we'll repeat that. We'll repeat it. <laughs> LivableHawaiiKai.org. We'll go to that website, and there's lots of opportunities for you to see what we're doing. But please take advantage of that um, sure. the nursery because it does serve multiple purposes for the community. Yeah, and fun times too. And it's run by community members, which is also awesome. Yes. And all the proceeds go back into the community. Yes, it's a nonprofit. That's right. Mm -hmm. So oh, that's in that's a wonderful thing part to of do our too. livable Hawaii Kai yeah. Hui. Right. Well, in talking with volunteers, we also have two wonderful volunteers over at the wetlands, uh, Kealava and Javier Complex, and their names are. Sam and Jim. Mm -hmm. They have provided us with enormous amount of hours of upper and uh, cleaning. Because the uh, preservation plan and the archaeological, actually say, the archaeological preservation plan calls for hand clearing, they are not allowed to use heavy equipment. So they are hand clearing these enormous areas with the help of volunteers. Could mm -hmm. you? Talk a little bit about what Sam and Jim are doing out there. Okay, well, Sam and Jim, they have uh, various volunteers and, and sometimes school groups come out and Lisa also helps with this. Um, we've had uh, clearing on both sides. Of the We also help steward the side of the wetland that's on the Oahu Club. Mm -hmm. And here is uh, Jim having some fun. <laughs> Many hours a week these two spend out there. And uh, he's trimming up that uh, night blooming series, night blooming which series. is just horrendous. Yes. Here's a, a view looking toward Cocoa Head over the new development there. Uh, so we're chipping on site, making mulch, clearing Kiavi, which you know the roots go deeper than anything. Correct. So yes, and they're pretty that. sturdy trees, mm -hmm. and the removal is pretty tough. Yes. So this area was completely overgrown, and Sam and Jim have been tasked with very carefully removing plants from the upland around the Heiau sites. And that is actually, they've exposed through a clearing, hand clearing, mm -hmm. more of the wall for the Heiau complex. Wow, yeah, it's so exciting, new things all the time. They're moving away the uh, night blooming series and they're, what's coming up are just artifacts that have not been recorded. That's really exciting. It's making the, well, uncovering history. They're uh, uncovering history as well we as they that. are giving us more opportunities. And this, and this picture, it was taken with uh, Van James, but that is a clear picture of one of the petroglyphs mm -hmm. up on that Heiau site. Yes. And we're so proud to have actually a number of these petroglyphs being identified on the platform site. Mm -hmm. And also Jim and Sam are finding new ones that have not even been recorded. So and we're so even looking at having another study done to record those as well. It's very important to document those yes. sites. Which is exciting only because the documentation helps to preserve not just our past, our present, but also to give information to the future generations. So we're very, very excited about the work that Jim and uh, Sam are doing there at the site. And they also spend an incredible amount of hours, but they also are the beacon yes. for other community groups so that they come to visit us at the sites to, and this is a very interesting story, ah, our willy willy tree. And we'll just talk a little bit about that. Right where you see the site on that willy, where the young willy willy tree is growing was an older tree that had died and it became a condominium for bumblebees. Mm -hmm. And that's what's called the bumblebee condo. That was our nickname. And graciously, we got a tree donated by Laura Thompson. So we had a little ceremony, a tree planting ceremony there. And at first, the tree lost all of its leaves. But with the heavy rain and the water soaking down to the depths, this tree looks like that today. And it's, we're very, very hopeful that it will go into maturity up where an original Willy Willy once grew. So yes. we're 
And it's gifts such as this that makes these stories come to life, you know. So mm -hmm. we thank Laura Thom Thompson and, and Sam and Jim for taking such good care of our newly acquired Willy Willy tree. Now, we also have a story that one of our other culture committee members, Chris Kramer, yes. had, I guess he had bought it back into light. It was a story that is found in The Native Planters, in yes. volume one. And it was uh, written by Handy and Pukui. And in there it mentions about the spring and how the spring had come up from Hahai Oni Valley and there were terraces all up on the backlands of the site that we have today. And the spring was in full bloom and it was just gushing forth. Well, since that time, and this was as late as the 1940s, so to have that little piece of information brought us back home to a very exciting time. We're looking to hopefully find the spring again. Mm -hmm. And if it's been be capped, exciting. to uncap it yes. so that we can have that water flowing freely back into our wetlands. There's a lot we can do to bring the site back to more closely resemble what it once was. Yeah. And to make it a more habitable site for the native wildlife. Yes. We have the dragonfly and damselfly and uh, black crowned night heron as well as the moorhens. So. so actually the site does provide a lot of natural resources that that we can use as educational tools. Yes, and we're looking to bring, and we've already had several school groups out and I'm sure more will come because for every age there's something to learn, whether it's about wildlife or plants or this is the Kamehameha Seniors, they were just out recently. They worked really hard removing invasives, cutting and hauling the waste. They got to plant some new things in what we call Zone A. They roll that out and we just thank them so much. And we also anticipating other school groups. Yes, correct? in fact yes. in November we're having a Punahou Kindergartners and later in November an Iolani group will come out to do some physical work again. And that's so exciting to have these groups come out and actually have hands-on experiences. Yes, for and whatever the age group we have experiences that will touch them and just give them an aloha for the area and for conservation work mm -hmm. and uh, appreciation for where they come from. And that's very important, isn't it, Marty, yes. to teach the young about conservation efforts as well as the cultural side of it. Very much. They go mm -hmm. hand in hand. And I know that when the Kamehameha School students came, they also had a cultural tour of the area. Oh, so yes, that enriched Uber. their experience with not just doing the hard labor, but also learning about the area and from a cultural lens. So that was also important. And Very I know important. that we're incorporating that in all of our work efforts mm -hmm. that every time. And, and can you also mention? Even, oh, the monthly work days. Yes. yes, second Saturday of every month. Um, everybody's welcome to come on down to the um, Kiavava Wetland Aveahao Complex. And there we have a volunteer day from about 8.30 in the morning till 11, 11.30, and then someone is there to give a tour if um, you want to see the cultural sites. Mm -hmm. And we can sure use your help, and it's actually really fun even though it's hard work. <laughs> yes, and um, as we mentioned once again, it's every second Saturday of each month. Is that yes, correct, that's Marty? that's correct. Wonderful. Well, also, you know, we have at Havea and Kihava Ava, the, uh, the traps. Can you talk mm. a little bit about the trapping? An important part of our conservation plan, okay. to especially to help the Hawaiian moorhen or alai ula, is uh, to help control predators. You know, in the, originally the only predators they'd have is the uh, aukuu and um, mm -hmm. uh, not too much else. But nowadays we have mongoose, cats, dogs, rats, yeah. and we have discovered red-eared slider turtles in the water. So when people drop off their pets, you know, you've heard this before, don't drop your pets in the nearby <laughs> stream or pond. What we have is uh, just a huge population of turtles. We're getting them under control with these innovative traps from Gray Boar Wildlife Services. And uh, they built this and, and they implement it and check it and remove the turtles. And then also on the upland, they have various um, 
types of traps to help us control the mongoose population. And this is so important. There's, there's an automatic trap there. And uh, it doesn't need to be reset every time. And this really helps the, our birds because mm -hmm. they're just struggling so hard. One, to find a habitat and two, to not be looking over their shoulder every time they <laughs> venture out of the reeds. And that's part of the conservation effort. Now, it is. talk about the fencing. Ah, well, our eventual plan is to look for um, the, the design to put in what we call a small mammal deterrent fence. And that would be that mm. picture that's right, so showing right, right now, now we're on looking the screen. At our NRCS <laughs> conservation plan. So this is a science-based plan. So we're not just guessing, oh, we think the birds will like this or they need that. But we really have it founded in science, what plants we need, um, what kind of a fence, where the fence needs to go, what they need to have to protect them more in a more long-term way from the predators. The birds are still free to come in and out. They fly if they want to. They're not that fond of flying, but they will. And uh, it, we also will provide a walking path around the pond for those educational tours and just for the enjoyment of the beautiful area. So uh, what you see in yellow is mainly the, the hui side. Mm -hmm. And then you see some tennis courts and a swimming pool, and that's the Oahu Club side. And all inside the black dots is the wetland, even the marshy area surrounding it. And just to the very right um, of the yellow area, uh, about in the lower middle of the right edge, is one part of the complex, but the hill complex goes a little bit into the yellow area and all around the side of the hill and yeah. other uh, stretches around the next area as well. Well, that's wonderful news that you know we will have that kind of protection mm -hmm. so that the, the hens can lay their eggs in peace and not yes. have to worry, over, as you said, looking over their shoulders to <laughs> see, you know, their little eggs will be protected. Well, this is a good segue to get into someone who had just visited us and has visited us several times, oh, yes. our good friend Charles. Uh, yeah, so can you please talk a little bit about sure. Charles and his work and, and how exciting it's been? Well, a couple of years ago, we met uh, Mr. Charles Van Rees, a doctoral student from Tufts University. And his uh, doctoral study, he is banding the legs of the Hawaiian moorhen so that he can study their movement because their habitat's been so fragmented and they're so critically endangered that he realized that studying their movement would help ensure their survival. Mm -hmm. And it's such a, so very little is known about this bird. They're the most elusive wetland bird in Hawaii. And so he's visited our wetland and banded the, words at Ki, the birds at Kiababa and around other wetlands around Oahu. And for the past two years, we've been um, connected with him. And now he is our official um, conservation biologist and he um, advises us, and so we're so thankful to have that expert advice, and he'll be coming back this summer to continue his work. And everyone has a chance to be a citizen scientist, as he calls it, and he has a website you can log on to to um, learn how to read the bands he's put on the birds, and it's uh, pretty interesting, and then you can actually report back to him and help him gather data for the study. Oh, that's so wonderful to, yeah. to see science in action. And I don't think our young children and or even young adults have those kinds of opportunities to do hands-on experiences. And I think this is very important. Yeah. And that also comes to mind, the banding. Right. So they know where the birds are. Mm -hmm. But we have a very special story, don't we, about one of those birds. Oh, yes. Can you share a little story about that? Well, um, what I know is that the Kiavava birds have the distinct uh, hot pink over aluminum on their uh, leg. And then this is how you know it's from Kiavava. And each wetland has a specific code. And then the individual, um, e they each have two other colors on the opposite leg. Well, there was a bird that was sighted by one of our citizen scientists on the other side of the island. And I believe you were able to help name that bird. 
Yes, and actually the bird was found in enchanted lakes. Mm -hmm. So in trying to figure out a name for the bird, we decided that this was a bird that followed its ancestral memory back to another wetland. So we said lele, which is to fly, ala is the pathway, ike is knowledge, kahiko of the old. Ah. So lele ala, ike kahiko was the name we gave this bird, and then it's short for lele. Yes. And we name him or her lele. But we're very excited because this also brings up another uh, item about uh, traveling from this end of the island in Mauna Lua to the Kailua side, the windward side, and there was also fish population. I was just thinking that. <laughs> that used to travel underwater, underground, yes. through the uh, lava tubes, right. and that they would end up in Kailua or sometimes, you know, in uh, Kaneohe Bay, mm -hmm. and then come all the way back over to Kuapa. Yes. So there's history there. So we know that, you know, this, these travels of our uh, native uh, animals, yes. if we give the habitat restored, they can continue this ancient travel, so we're very happy. But we also know that we have to keep our habitats in a condition that is conducive for them to survive. Yes, and we just saw one unbanded bird arrive on the Havea site. Oh, so they are traveling back and forth. Oh, that is so wonderful, wonderful, so wonderful, wonderful, wonderful news. So there's a lot of exciting things that are happening out in Mauna Lua and there's scientific things, there's cultural things, there's preservation things, conservation things. And some of the things that I'd like to mention as our time is growing very short is we're very fortunate that we were able to save Kaivi Coast. Oh yes, tremendous. That's a wonderful achievement that the, the Hui community has. Effort. It was a full-on community effort. We also are helping to steward Pahua Heiau site and we're looking at doing other sites as well. So there's exciting, exciting news that are happening over in Mauna Lua. If you're out in that area, if you live out in that area, we encourage you, please come join us for the Livable Hawaii Kai Hui as a Hui itself is looking to help foster volunteerism, stewardship, and most importantly, love for the land that we live in. That's right. Mauna Lua. Aloha and ahui ho.